Welcome everyone. We are excited to have you join us today as we talk about Roots Tech and our classes. And we have, we're being joined by some of our great speakers and we're excited to share them with you and learn just a little bit more about them and some of the classes that they will be presenting. So welcome and we are excited. My name is Rhett Dabbling. I am the learning manager here at Roots Tech. So I'm responsible for all the classes and the content and the learning that will happen at the event, both in Salt Lake City and online at rootstech.org. And just as a reminder, Roots Tech will happen uh, March 2nd through the 4th, and we encourage you to register at rootstech.org. So welcome. Let's go ahead and we will jump in. Thank you for taking some time out of your day today to be with us. Uh, thank you to our participants with us today. Thank you for taking some time. We are glad to have you. And we are excited to share some great information about uh, what will be happening. If you look on the wall behind me, this is our very low tech schedule that I'm currently working on. So all of these post-its represent classes that will be happening in the Salt Palace in Salt Lake City across the different events. But in addition to what's happening in Salt Lake City in the Salt Palace, we also have a lot of content, a lot of classes that will be happening online at rootstech.org. Lisa will be one of our online presenters, and we're excited to include her. So um, whether you will be joining us in Salt Lake City or on rootstech.org, we will have a lot of uh, classes for you to choose from. And a lot of our content online will be live webinars where you'll be able to engage with your um, with the speakers and other attendees, be able to share ideas and best practices and really um, be able to work with other people who are like minded and share that love of family history. All right, so um, let me take we'll take just a few minutes. And we'll have each of our uh, participants here introduce themselves. Lisa, we'll start with you because you're at the top corner of my screen and then we'll go around. Thank you so much, Fred. Hey, it's great to be here. I'm so excited that we're talking about Roots Tech. I mean, you know, you're at the best time of year when we start to get our planning going. And um, uh, I have been speaking at Roots Tech, gosh, since the second year, as I recall, every year since the second year, and love it every single time. And, and I do uh, genealogy gems. So I host the genealogy gems podcast, which is, we're coming up on our, I think it's our 17th year. We kind of launched when podcasts first launched. So from that, it's grown into the YouTube channel and uh, everything else. So I'm just really happy to be here and amongst some some very talented genealogists. So there's a lot to learn. Thank you. Jenny, let's go to you. Yeah, well, I'm, you might guess from my accent, I'm from Australia, from Sydney to be precise. And I'm speaking again at Roots Tech in person. I've been to... Um, five uh, Roots Techs in Salt Lake City, the London one and the two online ones. And as I say, this year I'll be speaking at Salt Lake City and also doing an online presentation. And I'm an influencer. And I'm, for the first time, going to be an exhibitor, exhibiting my new product, Site Builder, which is a citation generator for genealogists. So we'll have uh, a real booth and a virtual booth. And I hope you looking at the appropriate one, depending on how you're joining uh, Roots Tech. Thank you for joining us. Miko. Hi, um, I'm Miko Cleland and I'm in Edinburgh in Scotland. Um, some of you might know me already from my previous life when I worked at Find My Past and now I'm Director of Content in Europe at My Heritage, but I've been a genealogist for quite a long time. And I think this might be, I think my first Roots Tech was 2013 or 14, I think. So it's been quite a while, I think including London and things, it, it's coming up to my 10th Roots Tech, I think. Um, but uh, yeah, I've seen it grow and grow and I've always been excited to get to Salt Lake City. And uh, it's, it's certainly a wonderful place to enjoy the atmosphere and to meet so many like-minded other family historians. So it's something that really, really is the highlight of my calendar. And I'm really excited that it's back in person for those two years we've been away. It's been wonderful to see lots of presentations, but it just isn't the same as getting to meet people in the flesh. There, there is something to be said for all of the energy that happens in, in um, Salt Lake City. We're trying really hard to replicate it as much as we can online with our live events and bringing people together in that sort of environment. So um, we encourage you to join us and we'll learn and we'll continue to grow and refine the process as we go forward. But it is nice that we um, are able to gather in person again. I, I've missed it. it, it mm -hmm. mm. 
definitely. It's kind of exciting to see it that everyone's got legs. I think we spent so much time <laughs> on these presentations. We don't. I've just forgotten that. So it's going to yeah. be good to see people again. Oh, that is one of the nice things. If you can say nice and pandemic in the same <laughs> sentence, um, is is if I were to stand up right now, you would know I'm very comfortable on the bottom half of my body. <laughs> 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 that that has been a blessing, but it'll be nice to be able to gather again. All right, let's take a couple of questions and um, we'll just jump in there. So Lisa, we'll start with you again. But so as you mentioned, you've been a supporter of Roots Tech for years. Would you mind taking just a few minutes to tell us about your experience with Roots Tech and why do you keep coming back? Uh, well, I remember it knocked my socks off the first time I went um, because it was like no genealogy conference I had seen before. And it was fun. And I don't know, anybody who has watched my stuff or follows me knows I really like to have fun. I like to have fun with genealogy. And um, I think you really feel that. I, I always felt it when I just walked in the door and just the energy and the excitement. And so the fact that it keeps evolving and, and you kind of said it really well, which is you're pioneering making that interactive experience online as well as in person. I mean, meeting people where they are, wherever they are, where whether it's around the world or what can, you know, situation that they're in, that they can be a part of this. So to me, uh, that's exciting. I keep coming back because I keep learning something every time. And um, I also really love to meet um, folks who follow my work. You know, that's as, as maybe the selfish part for me is that I just really love being able to connect in person and connect online and, and have more relaxed conversations with people when normally I'm just, you know, yapping on a, on a YouTube video or on a, on a podcast episode, we really get a chance to connect and hear about the impact that we're making and what people are struggling with. What do they want to learn next? You know, because every time I go I, I love teaching, but I'm also learning. I'm learning about what do I want to do next year? Because there are some new things coming up that people want to learn more about. And, and that makes me want to learn more about it. So it's, uh, it's definitely well worth the investment, no matter how you participate. Thank you. All right. Um, let's see, Miko. So you've been a part of Roots Tech Online in Salt Lake City and in London and in Salt Lake City. Um, so what is one of your favorite or a couple of your favorite Roots Tech experiences? It's hard to pick. There's been so many. Uh, I think one of the, the most exciting things is just that everyone comes together and you can see that in different ways. I loved when you started doing that relatives at Roots Tech thing, yeah, which fun. meant that I could mm. find all these new relatives. And um, for, for a couple of years when it first started, I didn't really get anything <laughs> that that close. And then it, it, it sort of like a light switch moment flicked on and I got to meet a, a wonderful fourth cousin and um, we shared some stories and some photographs and that was great but um, I think the biggest moment for me was uh, it's actually quite poignant because this this week is the anniversary of this event um, I had a relative that was involved in a mining disaster in Illinois in a place called Cherry 1909 it's still one of the most deadly mining disasters in American history um, 259 people died and my relative um, hid inside this mine. They walled themselves up and uh, they stayed in there, 21 men in the pitch black for seven days. And he in the dark sang abide with me every hour on the hour to keep the spirits up. And I don't know if they got so sick of hearing abide with me in the dark and just decided that was it, I'm gonna leave. And they broke out and they got out to the, the, the surface of this mine and everyone was thought, this is a miracle. Wow, these men have survived. My relative refused to have a photo taken for the local paper until he was given $5 and a bowl of soup. And that's how I know he's definitely my relative. But uh, <laughs> that photograph I found on um, an auction website. And I was telling this story when I, I did a Roots Tech presentation. And a few people sort of spoke to me at the end and said, oh, I, I remember that and this kind of thing when they, they know of the history of this thing. But then the next day, a man came to see me and he says, I I was from that village and my grandmother remembers the men coming out and, and everyone was celebrating these men found alive. And he said, I've written you something. And he, he wrote out this song that they wrote and they sang. And he remembers when he was a, a little boy being sung this song by his grandmother about these miners and about the time they spent underground and this kind of thing. And I've, I've tried to Google it. I've tried to look and I can't find it anywhere. That incredible local knowledge 
came from just this happenstance meeting. And I think that happens more often than not when you just get so many people who are really into family history, all these wonderful people meeting the coincidences don't really feel like coincidences anymore. I think we're all so uh, tuned in and like-minded. And I think if anything like that's going to happen, it's going to happen at Roots Tech. So those wonderful lightning bolt moments happen at Roots Tech. And I'm looking forward to hopefully one every single year from now to the end of time. And uh, maybe I'll get 10 this time, but I'll keep my fingers crossed for any. Thank you for sharing that story and a little bit of your family history. Mm -hmm. Jenny. Yep. Uh, so you did a class this last year on uh, reading old documents. Yes. And I enjoyed that class. I learned a lot about it. Thank you. What is one of your favorite parts or activities that happens at Roots Tech? That, uh, that is a really hard question because there are just so many great things. But I do love the expo hall. You've got that constant buzz in there. And you've got the ability to see anything new that's going on. Um, and, I mean, the whole name says why I wanted to go from the start, Roots Tech, combining technology and genealogy. My degree is in computer science, and that's what I did for nearly 25 years. And so I get opportunity to see any new developments that are going on, watch them demonstrated, and look at various things in the demo theatre and demos on people's booths and I really like that um, bumping into the people that you've met at previous conferences while you're wandering around there it's just a fantastic experience as Lisa said it's unlike anything at any other conference that I go to. Thank you for sharing uh, we as part of the Roots Tech team Roots Tech team we often call the expo hall the heartbeat of the conference there's so much energy in there and uh, as Jenny mentioned you can find uh, hundreds of booths and people talking about different products and and uh, things that you can use and learn to further your own family history work. So we have 300 or so classes that will be happening outside of the Expo Hall, but with inside the Expo Hall, there are also countless other pieces of learning that will be happening as well. So we encourage you that if you're joining us in Salt Lake City, come to the Expo Hall and if you'll be online, um, there will, there is an online expo hall as well that will have all of the same stuff. So uh, take some time, make sure you swing by the expo hall, either online or in person, and uh, see what's out there in terms of technology. Hey, okay, thank you. All right, Lisa, let's come back to you. Uh, so you'll be teaching four classes in 2023, two of which specifically deal with technology and Google. Can you tell us how you became interested in these tools? Absolutely. Um, well, you know, back when I first started my podcast, Google was kind of launching around that time and Google Earth was out there. And I remember um, I had an old photograph that my grandmother had handed to me when I was eight years old. And I always tell my my uh, listeners, I, I was the only kid in grade school using her allowance to buy death certificates. I was so into it at eight years old. I mean, and I was fascinated because this picture really meant something to her. And I kept thinking, I don't know where this is. I think it's in San Francisco, but I'm not sure. And then it dawned on me that, okay, well, what tool would help me with geography? And I thought, well, that's Google Earth. And that's kind of where it started to gel for me that it's really not about using a genealogy tool. It's about using the tool that has the ability to do what it is you need to get done. And that may be outside the space of genealogy, might be inside of it. I ended up using Google Earth to um, do some kind of cross-referencing and a street, you know, going down into street view using the old historical maps that are built into that program, which is absolutely free, which is the best price. And I ended up finding the exact street corner where my great grandfather was standing, holding my grandfather when he was six months old in front of their little storefront. And it, it just really changed things for me. It just made it so much more exciting. Uh, as my grandkids started to come along over the years, they would see me using them. I use that at school. I know how to do that. And so now we're doing mm -hmm. it together. So that's why I'm so excited. And I think it's still so relevant to be talking about how to use these tools. Um, ge genealogy is all about place and time. We got to have that to get the right people. And so why not use the most powerful 
free geographic tool there is, and that's Google Earth. So we're going to talk about um, some exciting things, projects, and honestly, the projects are limitless in terms of what can be done with Google Earth. But then we're also going to be using Google in uh, Reconstruct Your Ancestors' Lives with Google, taking some known facts and then building out the context of that story, just using Google tools that are absolutely free and at your disposal to find those little hidden gems across the internet. So it, it's going to be fun. I'm, I'm, that's exciting. Thank you for sharing that. I'm looking forward to those classes. Thanks. So, and uh, as a note, Lisa's classes will be online at rootstech.org. All right, uh, Jenny, let's come back to you. So mm -hmm. you'll be teaching an online webinar about online sources for immigration into Australia. What yes. are some of the ways that you will use um, to engage learners and help them to see how they can apply this in their own work? Well, of course, with something like online sources, it would be the easiest thing would be to just put up lists and lists of links, but that would be boring. I mean, all those links will be in the syllabus that is available, and I will go through some of them, but it's important for people to understand how to interpret the information that they will find on those links. So I'll spend time explaining the different ways people could have come to Australia, which everybody who came before the 19th century, unless their um, ancestors were purely Indigenous or came by ship, but they may have come as convicts or as free settlers or as ship's deserters or um, well, the, marine, the military. And there's different things that you have to know about each of those different ways that somebody could have come. And of the free settlers, there's several different types of schemes that could have brought them out. And they need to understand about how to interpret the records and that often there is two copies, two different records, and you have to look at both and to illustrate it with a whole lot of examples and try and make it as interesting and visual as I can to engage everybody. Thank you. I'm looking forward to those classes as well. Not that I expect you've gotten the ancestors to Australia, <laughs> but some of the principles would still apply um, to any other country. Exactly. Yep. Thank you. All right. Um, so we will take some questions in just a moment, but if you have questions that you would like to ask any of our panelists or about Roost Tech in general that I can answer, please put them in the chat and we'll take some time here in just a moment to answer those. Miko. We will have hundreds of new classes at Roots Tech in 2023. And one of the main purposes of Roots Tech is learning. That's why we're gathering together is to learn and to improve our skills and help us to connect with our families, whether they are alive still or they've gone on before us. So how do you think classes and events like Roots Tech help the genealogical community? Um, well, there's a fantastic trick of the mind called the Dunning-Kruger effect and you've probably you might have heard of it before and if not you've probably definitely experienced it whether it's at work or at school or anywhere else where people who don't know that much about a topic tend to think they know lots about it and then as you learn more you realize actually I don't know that much and you you start to get a bit more modest and I think the quickest way to learn that you don't know everything about a topic is to go to somewhere like Ridstech and see the amount of talks that are on offer, the amount of things you can learn. I think we've all started our genealogy journey at that Dunning-Kruger effect point where we think we know where all the records are and everything we can do with everything. But then you look at talks uh, like Lisa's that are using tools that aren't designed for genealogy, but for genealogy. And you learn about other records in archives you may never have heard of, other techniques you can use, uh, Jenny's extra tools, all the things that we can use to push ourselves further forward. It shows that there's never a point when we've learned everything. There's no stopping point. There are so many things that you'll find at something like Roots Tech with just all of these people coming from around the world to show you these tools and how to use them or these techniques that you might have never heard of until this point. So uh, if you want to go for an education, there's no better place than to go to Roots Tech and just to, to, just to drink in the atmosphere and take in as many classes as you can, whether you're doing it at home or you're doing it in person, there's just so much to learn. And you choose whether you're interested in Finland or, or the, the Hawaii or anything like that, there's certainly going to be something for you and there's certainly been something to learn. And thank you for sharing. I think if I could add something to, to Miko's point, another thing that you see people learning that they start off 
and they think everything is online, which we all know that it isn't. There's still an awful lot of really great sources that are still that are not online. And the classes and the, the demos give people that um, exposure to all those sorts of records so that they learn that very important lesson that they perhaps start with or they start with thinking that you just follow the shaky leaf and then everything just falls out. And a conference like that disabuses people of those notions and it teaches them how much more they have to learn or have to learn, could learn the exciting things that they could find. And that's one difference with these presentations. You know, when you you watch a, a YouTube video or something like that, you don't get a chance to ask questions and you can at RootSec. Mm. So that gives you that extra layer of being able to take your family history problems somewhere. You can watch a presentation and you can go to a lecture, learn more. And if you have a specific example that you want to find out more about, you can bring it with you. It can ask experts in their field. You can ask people who will know everything that's worth knowing. And then hopefully they might be able to point you in the right direction in a way that you can't dream of anywhere else. Thank you. Yes, Roots Tech will be a place where experts like what we see on the screen here will be coming together and it is a great place for you to ask questions. So even if the classes you're participating in are online, uh, there are avenues where you can engage with uh, other learners as well as the presenters to, to ask those questions and get those answers. All right, let's take a couple of questions here uh, from our audience. So um, Janet asks, she says, I've never been to a live event, but plan to this time. Will there be tools to connect with DNA matches? And uh, the answer to that, at least from the roots type part is, um, we won't be providing any specific tools, but there are a lot of tools out there in the industry uh, where you can connect with DNA matches and, uh, and about those family connections. So yes, there will be ways for you to do that. And of course, the, the exhibitors of the, the, the various products will be there to explain and teach you how to use those tools. Exactly right. And um, the, the large names in the DNA industry will be in the Expo Hall. So you will be able to go right up to those spaces, whether it's online Expo Hall or in person, and ask those questions. All right. Uh, let's see. A question from Iris. If we're attending virtually, if a, present is, if a presentation is overlapping another we may be interested in, will it be recorded and online to watch later? Great question. So all of our classes that will be happening on rootstech.org, so like Lisa's uh, webinar and Jenny's, those will be recorded. And uh, once it has happened live, you'll be able to go into the on-demand library and view those at any time. And one of the great things about Rootstech is we will leave those up for you to consume any time during the year. So out of the hundreds of classes that will be happening, don't feel like you have to consume all of them during the, the three days of Rootstech. All right, uh, can you share with us some of the classes you'll be teaching at Roots Tech? So we've had a little bit of a, a teaser from these three people here, um, but I would just like to add that we will have classes that are, there will be something for everyone, regardless of what your skill level is. If you're a beginner uh, up to a professional, we have classes that will help you in your work. Uh, I was not hired because I'm a genealogist because I'm not. Um, but over the, the years that uh, I've been going to Roots Tech, my skills have grown. And it's because of these classes and the people that we see on our screens where I can now do genealogy. I can find those connections to my family. And uh, I owe each of you a great uh, debt of thanks and to all of our speakers. So thank you. Uh, let's see. Jenny, I think this one is going to be for you. Speaking mm -hmm. of old documents, I'm trying to teach myself reading old German. I have found that there are some transcribing programs out there, but it's not great. Are there any other programs that will scan a document to transcribe it? I'm not aware. I'm not very familiar with German records. I do remember that um, my mother had German textbooks in an old font. And when I was learning German at school a million years ago, I'd looked at some of her textbooks and at that stage they meant nothing to me. I couldn't understand them. Remembering back now, it's there's a lot of similarities with what I've seen in all sorts of old um, writing. So it's a similar thing. You learn, perhaps not, you won't get it automatically transcribed perhaps, but if you 
start learning the letter shapes, you can learn to transcribe it yourself. And even though it's not uh, German, I highly recommend the tutorial for the National Archives of uh, the UK on reading old handwriting, paleography as it's called, because it gets you into the habit of understanding how to, to tackle that and then find some textbooks in for the German or some examples that are formulaic that you kind of have an idea what you're looking for and practice it with the German. But perhaps start with um, the English ones where at least you know the language and you, the language isn't another thing put into the mix. Red, if I can jump in there, if I'm not mistaken, I think you're going to have Katie Schober speaking at Roots Tech. She is the go-to, and that's the beauty of Roots Tech is that even if you don't catch a class live, you're going to be able to get the handouts and you can download those. Those are like cheat sheets. Katie has some wonderful tools that she uses, and it's going to be that combination of um, help you cultivate those skills that you can do yourself. And then she'll also have her favorite tools, but she's really the person I would turn to for that. And she, I think she's going to be on the schedule. She is. Yes. Thank you yeah. for uh, bringing that up, Lisa. She is on the schedule and we're excited to have her and she is an expert. Okay. Uh, another question. Do you have any questions on how to research in the Middle East? So this one will be for me, such as Lebanon and Syria. My husband's family has links in this area, but I have no idea how to really research this area since I only speak English. Yes, we do have classes that are specific to people that have heritage in the Middle East. And those particular classes will be available online at rootstech.org just because that's where our audience for those classes are going to be. But yes, we, we have some exciting classes from some very knowledgeable people in that region of the world. All right, um, so I'll throw this one out to everyone. What recommendations do you have for creating and sharing a complete family history as a legacy? Do you have any thoughts on that? Mm. Well, that depends I, if it's paper or digital, isn't it? Yeah. Lisa? Mm. <laughs> I was just going to say, okay, so here's the thing. If you want your family history to continue on through the generations, we want to, to me, I want to first and foremost share it in a way that speaks to all those non-genealogists in my family, right? If they buy in, if they're interested, if they see the value, they'll continue to pass it on. They'll continue to share it around. If I'm just waiting for the next genealogist, I might be waiting a while. Mm -hmm. So for me, number one, video, create video, create stories. They can be short, but they're easily shareable. Everybody loves to consume video. Video is the number one consumable amount of type of content online right now. So if you want to reach your kids, your grandkids, your great grandkids, where they are, you're going to tell that story in video and learn how to do a little bit of storytelling. Um, that's one of the things I'm going to show in Google Earth is how to create a family history tour. It literally looks like a video game when you're done. And it's something you can send that file to anybody, the kids in your family, and they can play and explore and go visit those places where ancestors lived. And that's their history. Um, so to me, that's one of the first things to focus on is to share in ways that maybe, you know, I know about you guys, we all get really excited by the binders, like all oh, Jenny's binders back there. I mean, that gets <laughs> me excited or a big old dirty box out of the attic full of stuff, but everybody else in our family kind of doesn't get that. So I want to speak to them in a way that, that they can get. Yeah. So share your family history in a way that it makes it more than just names and dates. You yes. Real. Yes. People have stories, right? Thanks, Lisa. Did anyone because, else have thoughts? Miko. Yeah, there's a, a, a big thing in that when we pass on, sometimes we've got a, a private tree somewhere or we have details and documents. And nowadays there's a lot of thought put into the fact that you can give your passwords to these accounts to, to a lawyer or something like that, put them in a secure place. Uh, even if they're written down and in the safe, it just means then that um, if something were to happen, those accounts can still be accessed and those fo family photos, those GEDCOMs, the family trees can all be downloaded and still used. And it's one of those things that sometimes we forget because we, we might keep things privately and then, um, you know, the unexpected happens. So it's important really to to think ahead and to prepare for that, um, which is it takes a little bit of extra planning time, but it's worth doing just in case. Yeah, thank you for Smart bringing point. that up. Most of us yeah. probably don't think about that, but wouldn't it be horrible to have all of your work lost because your password was not mm. more accessible? Yeah. 
And I, I totally agree with what Lisa says, that stories are the way to get through to people. But before, we, in order to develop those stories, we've probably gathered lots of paperwork <laughs> and you don't want to lose that either. So try and get your family to promise. Mine have no interest in family history, but they have promised me that they will find somewhere like the Society of Australian Genealogists to give it to. And then if people get excited by those stories, they can go back and find the original paperwork later if they want to. I'm lucky one of my families had a, somebody had written up a huge amount of information on them and had deposited it with the society. So that was excellent. So yet yeah, Miko's point about the digital information, I would also stress a way, make, find sure that, find a way to make sure that the paperwork survives as well. Thank you, great point. All right, so we've had a couple of questions asking what is going on behind me on the wall. Uh, we, we talked on it right at the beginning, but for those of you who are joining us, this is the Roots Tech class schedule. So um, it's easier for me if I do it low tech this way because I can move post-its all over the place to see where things are gonna best fit. But what each, each one of these post-its represents one of the classes that we'll be having at Roots Tech. And they are color coded based on topics. Um, so that's what you're seeing behind me. Each one of these boxes represents one of the classrooms in the Salt Palace. We will have 16 classrooms in the Salt Palace um, and there will be five learning blocks during the day. So uh, classes will start at eight o'clock in the morning, go from eight to nine, we'll take a half hour break. And then from 9.30 to 10.30, we'll have another uh, block of classes. We'll move into the general session uh, and lunch and a break. And then at 1.30, we'll regroup for more classes uh, and then a half hour break, another group of classes starting at three, another break. And then the last one of the day will go from 4.30 to 5.30. And so that, that schedule will um, be replicated online. We'll keep that same sort of cadence online. Uh, we learned last year that we didn't build breaks into the schedule and we just said, here's everything online and people were exhausted at the end of the day. So we've, we've yeah. learned that we need to give people even online an opportunity to grab a snack, a drink or whatever they need to do. So we, we learned that and we're trying to do that better. So what you see here on the wall is Thursday and Friday on the other wall is Saturday. So we're, we're really excited and we will be publishing that schedule uh, and the list of classes probably out mid-December. So make sure you have gone to rootstech.org, signed up for um, notifications and emails and that you're also following us on social media um, so we can let you know when all of this these great classes and the schedule has been released so we'll go ahead and we'll wrap up thank you so much for your time this afternoon um, we are so grateful that you have decided to share your uh, your passion around family history and your experience with us and with the roots tech family um, again i'll just reiterate that we would love you to sign up, register to attend Roots Tech. If you're attending online, it will be free and you can register at rootstech.org. And if you want to join us in Salt Lake City, we would love to have you do that as well. And it'll be a one flat price this year of $98, which is a pretty awesome deal to come and get all of these classes. So whatever works for you and your schedule and wherever you are in the world, join us at Roots Tech, whether it's online or in person. And uh, did anyone have anything they wanted to add before we wrap up? Any final thoughts before we depart? Just how excited I am to actually be going in person again and seeing people and my friends again in person. And we're excited as well. Yeah, have a fantastic time. Thank you so much for inviting us, Rhett, to participate tonight. This has been fun to see all our friends and, and see everybody very soon. Yes, thank you. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing you all in three dimensions. <laughs> yeah, it will be fun. I think we're just over 100 days away now. So um, again, if you're unaware, Roots Tech will happen March 2nd through the 4th. And then uh, you are also able to take classes and review things anytime during the year. If you want to get in right now, all of our classes from 2021 and 2022 are available for you on rootstech.org. And then we'll release uh, the 2023 schedule in March. So, or those classes in March, and we'll release the schedule in December. Thank you for your time this evening. Uh, it's good to see you. And I look forward to seeing you in person in Salt Lake. Bye, everybody. Thank right, you. Thank Bye, you everyone. Thanks for Bye. joining us.